Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right what? podcast. Start yeah. Now. It's the only podcast where <laughs> I'm talking about a car. I'm both too old and too young to shit my pants publicly and get away with it. <sighs> and I'm over here frustrated because people can't read. This is Nona. Uh, she's, she's, the, <laughs> she's the reading. Replying to an email. <laughs> she's the reading. You were already sitting it down. You're fine. Ah, you are exhausting. So <laughs> today's topics are things like a serial killer in Indiana that I had no idea about, and I grew up in Indiana. And so one of the comments. Did you look at the map to see how close it was to your? I know hometown? where the town. Yeah, it's it's like two hours away. Oh, okay. Two three hours away. So. Well, it, it depends on who's driving. No, 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 no. <laughs> it depends on if we're talking about in the 90s when it happened or now. Because I just saw a map of the uh, bypass, the 465 and 65, 69, whatever, all of the highways around Indy. Okay. And it was just red. And people were like, really? Like, I can't even go to work. Everything's just at a dead stop. So... It might take six hours. I don't know. Okay. Anyway. But back then, yeah. it might have taken longer just because there weren't roads. Okay. I mean, there were roads. They just, yeah. And he roads. had a farm, right? Yeah. And that's where he buried all these bodies. How mm -hmm. many bodies was it? They haven't said how many bodies because they just or found, sorry. They found parts. Right. Right. They found 10,000 parts. Right. Remains. Multiple remains. But they've identified three people out of 10,000 parts. Out of 10,000. Parts. That's crazy. How many bones do you have? 202? Something like that? 206? 206, I believe, yes. So if every bone was intact, that's like 500 people. No, that's not the right math. 50 people. <laughs> Apparently, we all need to go back to school. I was using Greg math. <laughs> no, I was using Greg math. Greg, That's how Greg does math. What? Who's Greg? Greg on Twitter. Okay. Greg 35869974218. If that's actually accurate, that's going to be fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't think it is. One of, let's pull it up. It's not 3.14? <laughs> no. Greg. Greg is Greg 166769354420. Okay. That is Greg. That's Greg. Okay. That's the... Damn, he's getting close to a million followers. Hmm. For a guy with that kind of nose. I mean, it's fake, but... You're so mean, even though it's fake. Don't be mean. It's like, I don't, I don't understand how these people develop and just cultivate these characters and just, that's all they do all day. I swear, all these people that you talk about on X, Twitter, whatever, oh, all real. live in their fucking mom's basement. Coach is real. By the way, Coach, I know, I know you're probably watching this. No, he's too busy getting an SEC championship. No. Little League. And he's, financing water he's, beds. He's busy kicking moms out of the Little League World Series. <laughs> For having European vacations planned. Yeah, something. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, need a notary today, dude. Oh. And you didn't respond. <laughs> I had to go to somebody else's fucking bullshit. You said you would always be there to notarize anything I want. And you said that as an elected official of the United States government, holding the office of notary public that you had to <laughs> you had to do everything that I said and you didn't fucking respond so I'm filing a lawsuit oh my god <laughs> his YouTube channel from a couple of years ago that I found by accident was fucking hilarious and the, they only did how many videos I don't know but the the editing like I mean it was on par with like that time okay it's just like when people were doing it with their phone and like what's that was it quick quick time or whatever that was on Max and before no idea. Uh, Premiere and whatever no idea. the other one, Final Cut Pro. Um, it was just like like they're janky, half coordinated home movies done by people with no sort of film degree or experience. They were just trying to make some funny shit. I don't know which came first, the Twitter or the YouTube, but he hasn't uploaded on YouTube in years, so. Anyways, yeah. you digress. No, I didn't. I'm grassing. Would that be what it is? If you digress, wouldn't you be grassing? Yeah. Alex Choi 
which isn't his real name. That's his American name. Like my my neighbor growing up was the same way. Okay. His, he, he went by Adam. His last name was Ng, Adam Ng. But his real name was B.B. Lee Ho Ng. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. and who is this guy? Some YouTuber or somebody has a YouTube channel. I don't know if he was a YouTuber and just did like random stuff. But apparently he had two girls um, firing fireworks from a rented helicopter. The helicopter pilot lost his license too, by the way, over this. And who are the girls? Just random people, models, I guess. That They didn't go into detail about anything about them. And it doesn't even seem like they were charged. But, yeah, he's looking at federal prison time for firing fireworks out of a helicopter at a Lamborghini. Does he own the Lamborghini? That wasn't the the point of the charges. The charges were deploying um, explosives from an aircraft or something along those lines. The, and he paid for it. The video. And he hired the girls, but he didn't actually do it. He just set it up. I'm just trying to follow the story. So the, there's a behind the scenes look, which makes various references to his co- to him coordinating the shoot. So okay, he, apparently he's at least responsible for directing it. So he's our is he he's, in the Lamborghini? He's, no, he's our Alec Baldwin in this story. Ah, uh, <clears throat> okay. So, and then there's references in the text that was directed by Alex Choi or Che, depending on who you are. Some, some of them say Che, some of them say Choi. It just okay. depends. Uh, in the credits and then thanking the camera crew being a part of my crazy, stupid ideas. But yeah, so the FAA revoked the helicopter pilot's license over the stunt, which they also revoked the pilot's licenses of the two guys that did the Red Bull stunt, which was completely legal and sanctioned. The problem was they crashed the planes because the stunt failed. So if, I don't know what you're talking about. If the stunt, the Red Bull, the plane swap thing a couple of years ago. Okay. It's like two years ago. So they went, they built these planes that had like this, um, actually it kind of looks like the grid fins on the, on the SpaceX rockets, the thing that articulates on the side of okay. the rocket. Mm-hmm. Um, so when they take off, they were flush with the bottom of the plane. And then they would reach their altitude and speed that they wanted, and they would pitch the plane down. They would deploy this thing, so it created additional drag, and it kept the plane stable, so it would just fall straight like this Mm -hmm. rather than spinning or doing anything else. And then they both, so they would do that. They would set it, and then they had to jump out of their planes with their parachutes and then try to swap planes. One guy made it into the other one. The other guy did not, and that plane crashed, and then they both lost their uh, pilot's license because of it. Okay. But had they not crashed, it would have just been a cool video. Maybe it's still a cool video. Failures like that are incredible. That's why I watch so many of the SpaceX testing. Because you want to watch it fail? No, because I watched one of I watched the first one ever after Starhopper when they they, when they Starhopper. Starhopper was like the first iteration uh vessel that they built to prove that they could do um uh, repulsive landing. So, like repulsive you, landing. I'm pretty sure that's what that's called. Propul- propulsive landing. No, it's Pro- forever going to be repulsive okay. landing. Okay. <laughs> so, they they built just like it. It looks just like a, I don't know, like a stainless steel farm tank that you would see. Okay. And they built it just to be able to test, like, okay, can we take off straight? Yep. And can we land using the same rocket? Yep. All right, cool. And then they move from that to building the upper stage of the starship, the ship portion. Okay. And they, they built that without anything else like on it, any any fins or fairings or anything like that. And then they just did a bunch of, they had to do progressively like lower hops. So they did one, they just kind of like took off and then they had to like fly sideways a little bit. So it would still be vertical. They take off, fly vertically, and then land. And basically all of them failed until like the eighth one. And it was always like something dumb. It was always something dumb, like one little leg didn't flip out. So the whole thing just kind of like, it like landed, it was fine. And then it was like, boom, and then fucking massive explosion. <laughs> so, and then they coined the term RUD, Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly. Okay. So we went from talking about a YouTuber yeah. who coordinated fireworks being yeah. blown out of a. Helicopter oh, so, at a Lamborghini to SpaceX. Here's a point that I'm trying I, to follow your brain. Here's here. a point that I didn't know, which okay. probably 
I mean, this worsens this a lot. Um, the purchase of fireworks uh, in California is illegal. Oh. And they filmed it in California. Oh. So we had to have purchased it in Nevada and smuggled it across the border. Okay. I wonder what would have happened had they done the shoot in Nevada. Probably nothing. Oh. Right. I feel like Nevada is a free for all. I mean, they call it what's in city, right? It's a purple state, though. So it can kind of, you nope. can get it a judge or way. you can get a judge or a DA or whatever that just like wants to prove a point because it's an election year. Mm. Yeah. So they chose not only to do an illegal That's thing, so cool. but they chose the wrong state to do it in. Yeah. And they're like, it's like bottle rockets. Those like they look like those ones that like they flare and scream but don't really have like a big pop. Yeah, I want to know who was in the Lamborghini. Nobody. They were they were trying to destroy it. What? Yeah. It wasn't what? Yeah. That was the purpose? Yeah. That's what this world has come to. Yeah. Everybody, all for clicks and all for views yeah. is destroy property. Yeah, if you don't do something Ew. progressively cooler than what the next person is. Ew, doing. that's disgusting. That's how people make money these days. Gen X is disgusting. Which, speaking of, did you know that they canceled ankle socks? I don't know what that means. Gen X has canceled ankle socks. What does and, that mean? Like, wearing ankle socks is a no-no. Am I wearing ankle socks? Yes, those are ankle socks. Oh, they can get fucked then. Yeah. And um, you have to wear, like, full-size socks now. Dumb. Get fucked with your stupid yeah. hippie bullshit. <laughs> I feel like that was an 80s look, wasn't it? I'm, Having like the white socks. I don't know. These people are uh, all fucking weird. I don't I don't know. Like that was not in our generation at all. Nope. So um two just kind of I don't know. None of these things are a cohesive kind of thing. Um the student uh, that lived in the homeless shelter that graduated as a valedictorian, uh, his name is Elijah Hogan, credits his success to his high school and the shelter community. Mm -hmm. The thing that I didn't see and I wanted to, like, you know, read and figure out um, was whether or not, like, he was living there with his parent or sibling. Or if or, he was there by himself. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, started his high school career do, dealing with remote classes. So yeah, that's about right. Um, and how do you do remote classes when you're homeless? Do if you're in the public public library. If you're in the shelter, they probably have Wi-Fi. It's probably not good, but yeah, but a device. I mean, I don't. I've only ever been in like one ever one in South Bend because I volunteered with some friends to serve food on Christmas Eve. Actually, so on my birthday, like this is before I moved here, so ten. Plus years ago. Oh, you did a good deed. Oh, he did one good thing in his life. Oh, but so we only went into like their cafeteria serving area. So I don't know like what the inside of one would normally be like. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they have like rooms or any sort of like, I would have to imagine. Privacy of any kind. I would have to imagine that if you're in a larger city or like a larger region, uh -huh. you probably have like rooms that you can like you you don't live in but like they have like a schedule like if you wanted to read or have like a a movie that you watched by yourself or whatever i don't know i have no idea i have no idea either so this is in uh new orleans okay uh he recently wrapped up his senior year at walter l cohen high school while living in covenant house a homeless shelter serving youth under 22 in new orleans okay so under 22 only so that means he was not there with parental units yep um he thanks the fellow kids in the shelter his fellow students and teachers and staff um who he had leaned on for support he finished with a final gpa of 3.93 good job yep uh hogan is one of two valedictorians in the class of 2024 cohen charter charter high school uh, in New Orleans, Uptown neighborhood. Hogan delivered a valedictorian speech uh, address at their graduation ceremony on May 24th, a speech that he described as a thank you note. See? 
He didn't have to give his teachers a gift. The gift was that he graduated, just like I said. See? Um, the act of saying thank you is fabulous, especially when you cannot financially provide a gift to go with that. I'm not discrediting the act of saying thank you. Okay. Okay. So it actually, it doesn't say anything in this from ABC News. It does not say anything about a family. Nothing. So then it sounds like they were not part of his life. They would have been mentioned in some capacity. But also, rightfully so, the story is about him and his triumph. He wants to major in graphic design at Xavier University of Louisiana. And they specifically mention how he's a Marvel and Stan Lee fan. And Xavier, Xavier, however you want to say it, was... Gotcha. It was Xavier School for Gifted mm -hmm. Youths or whatever. Um, for other students looking to follow in his footsteps, he recommends you focus on your schoolwork. That is a great <laughs> focus. Yeah, literally, there's no mention of family at all in the entire article. So they likely are not part of his life, which is very admirable that he was able to sure. yeah. get through and succeed yeah it's crazy it is i wonder crazy. i wonder if he wouldn't comment on his family and that's why they don't know anything about it because that's like either you were emancipated and didn't want to live with them or kicked out you yeah or you were going through foster care and couldn't land any sort of foster family for mm -hmm. one reason or another or they are deceased yeah or they are incarcerated. But normally, but normally when somebody's dead, they'll make... Okay. The family died in a tragic plane accident in 2005. Okay. Like there's but a, if they're incarcerated, then that's likely not going to want to yeah. be mentioned. I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes people want to hear that story because they want the overcoming the odds of, my family did this and I didn't repeat history. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. It's still... It's weird to me that... That they weren't mentioned at all. Yeah. Mm, I don't. I don't think so. The story is about him, about his family. But that's part of the story. Like, how did you get to that point? Like, what motivated you? You don't just get. What to the... motivated you to be in a homeless shelter? No, no, no. Once you got there, what motivated you? Mm -hmm. You've now reached probably one of the lowest points ever in your life. So what motivated you to get out of that point? And usually it's, well... Likely I... a financial motivation okay. to not continue to be a ward of the state. Well, I'll probably get some sort of... I hope he gets a free stuff. ride to wherever he's accepting. Even if he doesn't, there's probably somebody, there's probably people reaching out to him. A GoFundMe? No, not even GoFundMe. Like there's, there's always, there's always some uh, benefactor who wants to add that to. I want to sponsor this young man. Yeah. Yeah. And do a good deed. Yeah. And tell everybody about it. Yeah. To make myself feel better. Yeah. Unfortunately, as shitty as that sounds. Mm -hmm. That's what you, makes the world go round. You have to do, like, we've talked about that about the nonprofit stuff. Like, you have to talk about what you do, otherwise people don't know. Mm -hmm. You're going to have people that are going to say, oh, you're only doing it to get notoriety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I also need notoriety to continue doing the work. So mm -hmm. what, what, what do you want from me? So the other thing, one of the main things, actually, that I wanted to talk about in this one was... um. I've seen this in a couple of different places. People essentially rewriting history, specifically with regards to the story told about um, Killdozer. Now I can't think of his name in Granby. That was like what twenty years ago? Ninety or two thousand four, I believe. Yeah, oh yeah, twenty years ago. Yeah, 
but they're like the whole thing is being re- so what do you do mean you, so what what's happening i don't know people like they it went from him being like an anti-hero because i mean what he did was definitely illegal a hundred percent but it went from him being an anti-hero to like now people are saying no everything that you've been told about this story is complete lie and bullshit he was actually just a piece of shit the entire time and had like plotted all this stuff like he was trying to do harm then there's two different there's two different stories about the actual um armor and everything like that okay that one of them i know very little about this story by the way one of them was that there were no weapons other than the one that he had put in there with the intent to kill himself because that's that was the plan the entire time was to commit suicide okay um but they half of what i saw where there were no um gun ports or anything like that like there was no way for him to shoot out or deploy any sort of weapons outside the vehicle like he was sealed and had the i don't know if you saw the pictures of the equipment he had a big crt monitor like big crt monitor like yeah have. all i know about this is the one video that you showed me yeah. that it was like a news footage yeah. so and that was i don't know two years ago that you showed me that sure something but like then, that but then so then the other one the other okay. side of the story they were showing images from the inside okay. where you could clearly see that he did have weapons mounted on the inside. Oh. And so when SWAT and other officers and stuff like that were trying to surround him, they were claiming that he was shooting at them and that's why they stayed back most of the time and they were trying to use other construction equipment. So his property was uh, supposed to be sold. He had agreed to a price to sell it to a concrete company, a concrete okay. manufacturer. And so they had equipment right there. So some of their equipment was used. But he, so he actually bulldozed through his own building. He didn't even open the door. He just drove through the wall to destroy it so that the property they left behind was also fucked. But he hadn't officially sold it yet. No. It was set no, 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 to no, 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 sell. No, no. So that's that's how this whole thing kind of spiraled okay. out of control. And he was an Air Force veteran, which I just learned. I didn't realize that. Um, okay. He was supposed to sell, and then he he uh asked for a higher price a couple times okay and there was all this other stuff that went on the company that was going to buy it ended up backing out of the deal because he asked wanted too much and they bought lots that basically formed an l around his property oh gosh which also cut off the access road to his muffler shop Uh. so people weren't able to get to him anymore he proposed to the city council to cut in a new road and that's why he bought the bulldozer he was going to do the work himself. Okay. And then and they, you didn't know any of this before. Not not that part. No. Okay. I knew about I, city. I'm I, I knew about bit. him being mad at town council, city gotcha. council, whatever. So they wouldn't let him do it, and customers couldn't get to him. So he started losing money. He was about to go bankrupt, essentially. Gotcha. <clears throat> then they started fining him for not being connected to city utilities because the property wasn't originally connected to it. So he had to pay like eighty grand to be connected to utilities and they were like issuing fines like two thousand dollars a month and all this other Damn. shit yeah no fault of his own right. he bought existing property he didn't build it mm-hmm. um so that's basically what set him off it took him a little over a year and he had told friends and family what he was planning on doing and just and nobody either believed no, him no. or they talked, ratted him out. They talked to his best friend. Like yeah. there's a whole interview with his best friend. She's like, yeah, he said he was going to do this. And he was going to mount guns. And he was going to, he, there was a whole list. She, he told her like all the properties that he planned on destroying. There's only like one that he didn't get to. And it was like, I think it was a church. And she didn't say anything. Yeah. So that's on her. No, that's, I mean, anytime when somebody's talking about something completely like outlandish like that. You're like, okay, whatever. You're just pissed off. Like, you don't have the money to do that. You don't have the time to do that. And then it drags out. But from... at a certain point, you need to say something to somebody. No. Nobody's going to. No. They're, that's that's such a, like, weird, even even if. I understand that it's weird. No, no, I understand no, that even, making a kill dozer is out of the ordinary. Even I if, understand that. Even if everything that he told her she went and reported it who would believe what if, her <laughs> yeah what what are they going to do when they show up to his property mm-hmm. like oh hey you're welding something over there what's that for because what he didn't attach it to the bulldozer it had to be lowered onto the bulldozer i'm not talking to you 
<laughs> it had to be lowered onto the bulldozer while he was in it. He was never getting out. It was a tomb to begin with. Gotcha. There's no doors. There's no anything. Okay. So, like, what are they gonna? What are they gonna do? Hey, you have this bulldozer that you bought with the intent to cut in a road that we won't let you do, and you have plate steel over here that looks like you're welding together. Okay. There's no, there's, there's no crime. <laughs> Anyways, so speaking of criminals, you wanted to talk about Mike Glover again. Yeah, well, once the order of this episode. So, depending on what day this episode comes out, this might come out the day of his case. Mm -hmm. um, we had planned on live streaming it, but if you see this episode, that means we weren't available to. Mm -hmm. If you don't see this episode, and it comes out after we live stream, just ignore this part. <laughs> just fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, that's the case. Yeah. If this comes out on Tuesday, June 11th, you'll know that we are not available to live stream. More pressing. Yeah, we've got a billion things going on running around with our fucking uh, chicken like with our head cut off trying to get fucking shit signed to close on the sale of the house. We got three weeks from today. Wow. Yeah. You gotta go get some stuff notarized today. Thanks, coach. Yeah. Wasn't available. Yeah. Um, yeah, the kids are out of school. That's a bonus. Mm hmm. With noise in the background. Yes. A noise bonus. I the way that you said it sounded no, just, really weird. With, with you with you working over there and actually having to be on the phone all the time. Right. I feel like with my setup, mm -hmm. I have noise cancellation of environment noise cancellation. Right, right. So if I'm on a video call with a client, I'm the only one that can hear dogs barking and kids screaming. They can't hear it, but you being on a regular phone call with people. Right. They, they can hear everything yeah. in the back of your end. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's okay though. It's okay. okay. It humanizes me. It humanizes you? Yes. You, I am not that, a robot. You're saying, that, you're saying that people think that you're only tits? I am not a robot. It you're, humanizes you're me. You're not only tits? You're not just made out of, of boobs? Okay. So, According to Andrew, I'm only made out of boobs. So you should see the comments. that like people completely unfounded. Like there's no... What comments? From the Michael Lover case. Okay. They're well. For one, they came on. They're like the felony charges were dropped. No, they weren't. They were not dropped. On March May twenty seventh, they were reduced mm. to misdemeanor charges, which we already talked about in a previous yeah. episode. Yeah. They were not dropped. They never were dropped. It just made it more sticky. More sticky. Yeah. That's sticky icky. Yeah. There's one of two reasons that you do that. One of them is because you know you're gonna they're gonna take a plea. Mm -hmm. The other one is because you know you want to go full speed and you want to hit him with everything those are the only two reasons the DA does that mm -hmm. they're not doing it out of the kindness of their heart no DAs are not kind they have a witness that's doesn't want to cooperate mm -hmm. doesn't have to cooperate mm -hmm. so they don't have much there right but there's other people are coming out claiming that um she gave another statement and there's no there's no actual documentation that this happened. Okay. There's a YouTuber who talks about it happening and he doesn't present evidence that it happened. So it sounds like he's full of shit. She he says she says mm -hmm. that she had had a minor fracture of that wrist the week before from wrecking her dirt bike. What? That's but but if she but was, it's not documented, I'm sure. But if she had been in a cast already, right? She wouldn't have been injured again, right? And they wouldn't have said, and he, wouldn't have gone to the hospital for the first time. Yeah, it would yeah. have already been recorded that she had previously been there. Yeah. So yeah, that sounds but, like he's full of shit. But, but when the doctors look at your X-rays, mm -hmm. they can tell if it's been yeah. Yeah. So if there's something in the medical report mm -hmm. that we're not privy to because that's privileged information, right. that changes things. That's the only possible scenario where... And in no world would she have broken or fractured her wrist and then waited an entire week to finally go get it seen. It's not true. I broke my wrist, I, wrist and waited I, three days. So... 
okay, when Chloe fell off of the swing set, she only lasted about 12 to 15, 16 hours. I broke, I broke my wrist on a four-wheeler. My brother was in the hospital for three days for me, him hitting, colliding head on. We were in a blind corner. So he was coming one way in this wooded trail. I was coming the other way. We never saw each other. Obviously, speed carries you wide into the turn. Both of us hit head on. Mm -hmm. He was in the hospital for three days. And I went and played football with a fractured wrist in two places. Went home. My grandparents took me home, took me to our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I slept on their recliner with an ice pack mm -hmm. underneath my wrist. Mm -hmm. And some ibuprofen or Tylenol. Mm -hmm. And I woke up one day and the bulge was on top. It originally was down. We thought it was just swelling. Mm -hmm. It was down below. Had the ice pack sitting in this recliner. Right. And the bulge was up here. And then my grandma brought me to visit. And the nurse there was like, hey, you should probably go down to the emergency department and get an x-ray. Got an x-ray. And they're like, yeah, it's broken in like three places. <laughs> Let's get you cast. Okay. But you would attest to being very tough sure. in most regards sure whereas I broke my wrist, not all of us are broke my wrist i broke my clavicle i broke my nose i broke my jaw mm -hmm. so yeah sure yeah i think i've broken some ribs too but it was never i never got extra and they were confirmed so whereas like for example with chloe she fell off the swing set Wanted to ice it. Didn't want to go to the doc. She didn't want to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And then I told her the next morning, "Okay, you was sure?" Hers, I don't. Was hers a green stick or hairline fracture? It wasn't. It wasn't a compound fracture. Let's be clear about that. It was. It was hairline. Okay. Am I saying that right? Hair hairline. Well, it's like along a direction of the bone, but it's not clearly broken through. It's right, like, not broken through. You know, through, like, you know, like when you take a pencil, a perfect, you, a perfect you, line. When you take a pencil and you like crack it yeah, a little bit, yeah. that's hairline. Some yes, for yes, kids, yeah. for kids, it's typically called a green stick fracture. I don't recognize that term. It's a green stick, like on a tree. Okay. When you have a brand new growth on a tree and you okay. go and try and break it, it doesn't actually snap because it's still green. Okay. You get like it's been like two years now, so it's not fresh in my. Brain? No, no, but I'm just explaining what a green stick fracture is. That's gotcha. why it has okay. that term because that's it's similar. Obviously, your bone's not made of threads of uh, lignin or whatever it's called in trees. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Not anyways. I say anyways. You don't get to say anyways. Is that going to be a shirt? So anyways. So anyways. <laughs> and it'll be, oh, I know. Perfect idea for it. Big cartoon thought bubble, right? So it's you get the full ADD effect out of this. Giant thought bubble. Okay. It's all empty, but then at the bottom in like the so smallest, anyways, the that's, smallest that's font. literally my brain around you. I'm just yeah. like, la, la, la. In the, in the tiniest little font right there at the bottom where people actually have to be like, so anyways. Yeah. So anyways. So anyways. It's been nice knowing you, people of the internet. So nice. Yeah, we have three episodes. We have three episodes for next week. So yeah. So anyways. We didn't talk about 500 subscribers still. All right, you better throw none that of, in right none now. None of the episodes for this week. Yeah. I I guess I should post it on the uh, community tab. I'll post. Okay. So this part of the video that you're watching right now is at the end of the video as we're recording it. And I'm cutting it right now and putting it at the beginning of the video so that you all know that at 500 subscribers, we're doing a $500 Amazon gift card, gift card giveaway. All you have to do, be a subscriber, leave a comment. And what if we've already hit 500 subscribers before this video uh, we'll, even airs? We'll have it. We'll have it. So bonus points. are we points, close though? 276. Uh, never mind. Um, Hurry up, guys. Bonus points if you recommend your grandma, your priest. Uh, they don't need to watch high, this. Your high school gym teacher from 35 years ago. Uh, Ew, if you're still talking to your old gym teacher. <laughs> at Cooper's graduation, all the teachers were like, you have a family here. Come back and visit us. 
<laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so yeah, now, welcome to the video. Welcome to the video. Transition. Cut. Placed. Intro. Stuff. <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Stuff and things. Stuff and things. Stuff in things. Stuff and things. You can do both. What's um? What are the, what are those things called? I'm gonna cut this to be back at the end of the episode. It's gonna be completely disjointed. Okay. What are those things called? Those books that we all got like when we were kids, where it had like all these different things where you had like word and then a line and then a word, and you'd be like, you had to like figure out what the meaning was. They didn't fully like spell it out. So you'd have like above the or like above and then law would be below it. So it'd be like above the law. There are all kinds of weird. Are you talking about like Highlights Magazine? No, no, what no. Are you talking no, no. About? I, I want to say Mad Libs, but that's not what that is. That's the fill in the blank thing. Okay. But they were just, it's all these, it's all these little like images or not images or like words and stuff. And you had to figure out and stuff. You would, you would have like a word within a word. Okay. So it would literally be word spelled between W O and R D. And the answer is word within a word or word in a word. I have no oh idea god. what you're talking oh my god. about. Oh my god. The math isn't what are those? What are those word uh, puzzles called where there's different layouts of the words? I don't know what to ask. Rebus? Okay. Images. No. Well, yeah, this one. This is... I love you. Uh, yeah. But that's, I mean, that's a terrible example, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. Stuff like that. That's not a word within a word. That's pictures no, in place of have, word. No, they have many different, they're not, there's not like one uniform standard. It's just however you can make something work. So you break, you break like a phrase apart or a word apart or whatever. And then. Okay. Are you with me? No. With me? There's, there's. You've lost me. Wait, is, is it right? Is this it? Yeah, that's exactly it, that. That is what it is. Rebus puzzles. Oh, I've never fucking guessed this name. I've never seen that before. You've never seen these. Mm -mm. So guess one of them. I don't know. Do this one. Travel line C C C C C. But so some of the clues that you would consider, like how many seas are there? Travel overseas. Okay, that clearly went over my head. Yeah. It's broken. Breakfast. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the father, ste stepfather, duh, Jesus. That reminds me, Cash called you dad the other day. Yeah, and does. then he was like, oh, I mean, stepdad. Uh, <laughs> Cooper's uh, friend's grandpa, the one that you said is his caregiver. Yes. He was sitting behind us and he introduced himself. And it wasn't until after I was trying to talk to Charlotte and he like tapped me on the shoulder and like introduced himself. Mm -hmm. And like, so I shook his hand. He told me his name and I turned around and I never told him my name. He was like, aren't you Cooper's dad? And I was like, oh, stepdad. And he's like, oh, same thing. I'm so-and-so. And then I was Aww. like, I turned back to Charlotte. Can you, you know, so this sorry. This is that graduation. Yeah, sorry about that. I wasn't trying to be a dick. No. I was just, she She was talking about something and I was like, had a million things going on. Yeah. I don't think he watches this, so. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. All right. Now we know. Rebus puzzle. Rebus Puzzles. Yeah, I've literally never seen those in my entire life. I wonder if they had, I'm not good at them. I wonder if they had a different name and that's like the official or like may, maybe there was like a copyright free version uh -huh. and that's like the that's like the Kleenex and then like we just gotcha. I, we grew up with the off brand. I don't know. I did like word searches and all those kind of things, I but to, I've never I remember the coolest thing ever. The coolest thing my friends thought, like when I had my first ever computer, mm -hmm. before even like AOL and Messenger and stuff like that was a thing, mm -hmm. 
my grandpa installed this program on my computer where I could create my own word searches. I could put in That's the words cool. and they would like randomize it and make it. And I would like give them to my friends and stuff. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Charlotte did that for her project uh, about two weeks ago. It was really cute. But like nowadays you could just literally say, hey, AI, I yeah. need a word search. Makes it too easy. Yeah. What, and back this then, generation has it too easy. Back then it was a novelty thing. And now yeah. I can just five words or speak it in. Mm -hmm. Boom, done. Yeah. So you just have to be the kid that knows how to stay out of the curve now. You have to be the kid with the technology. We're the ones with the technology. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> not that they care. They just want to play Mario Kart <laughs> and watch YouTube. Uh, to be a kid again. Yep. 500 subs, $500. Do it before July 1st. Ooh. Yeah. You're giving them a timeline? Yeah. Okay. It's reasonable. Okay. It's what day is it? Seventh? 23 yeah. days. That's basically 10 subs a day. Because we have a little over 270. Okay. 23 days, 10 subscribers a day. Mm -hmm. For 23 days, 230 subscribers. Mm -hmm. Do it. Our shorts do You guys best. can do it. Yeah. But it just needs to translate from likes and clicks to I'll, subscribers. I'll, I'll cut that specific portion as it'll probably go out on like Sunday. As our, because we have, we have shorts. We have one that came out 11. We have one that's coming out seven. We have two on Saturday, but we have nothing on Sunday. Okay. It's like me telling you about the 86 and Airborne being the leaders in STDs. Like that kind of stuff was, has gone out. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>